yeah. Okay, so you, you this. so you have a a latte art machine here, which is a repurposed 2D plotter and a pump on top, and you're pumping. You're pumping. Oh, it's going down in. How did you determine amounts? That's a heart. A heart shape. Yep. Cool. Okay. So you're you're using the. So you've got you've got two-dimensional drawing here, mm -hmm. one dimension being turned into the vertical plane by putting the plotter on its edge. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. You want to tell me about it a little bit now that we've videoed a little? Sure. What do you call this project? It's our latte art maker. And what gave you the idea for this besides drinking lots of coffee? <laughs> to come up with different things that we're all interested in, like the different sorts of ones that we'd spitball were like avocado toast sorts of things. And um, we tried, like you had a serious project one that got thrown around, but then we're like, you know, it'd be really fun to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So point to all the pieces here. Show me what's going on. So up top you can see the pump. This is the parasitic pump. This is the main portion of our project. It pretty much lets us transfer one liquid through the pump into somewhere else without having it touch any components and without really, uh, I guess, con contaminating it. Because it's a food grade parasitic pump, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the second main portion of our project, which is a plotter in itself. This pretty much allows us to con control the where where the pump really just outputs. And, and this is this is surplus from the 1980s. So you had to reverse engineer how to run this thing. So we took the entire like Julie and I sat down and took the entire thing apart, looked at all of the different wiring, tried to understand how the modules were working, figure out you know what are the different power capacities, what can um, these different outputs produce, and really starting to tweak and um, try and see. Um, what was doing what since we couldn't really find any data sheets on it um, <laughs> and, uh, unless you bought another plotter. <laughs> right. So, really yeah. yeah, and so it turns out that these are supposed to be measuring a strain gauge and then plotting that, the kind of like strain out. So we decided to build like fake strain gauges basically. Oh. Um, so we have like a, a voltage divider. Um, coming out from a DAC, from the DAC on the microcontroller. Oh. DAC A, DAC B, voltage divider. Yeah. So we convert, so we have like a, it measures like a very small like 50 millivolts uh, range and that just controls exactly where it, the pump goes. How interesting. So you, 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 you reverse engineered the voltage levels necessary and then made the PIC32 produce those voltage levels. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so the, the instrumentation down here is all level shifters and, and, and controls for, for various functions. So we have three buttons right here. The first button we saw makes the heart design. The second one would make a simple cert blot design. And the third one is to pretty much prime the device because in the beginning there's really nothing in the tubes so we want to for for the same results each time we want to make sure we put something through here before before actually starting a program and then that up there is a recycled lab 3 motor control circuit mm -hmm. that pretty much allowed us to so control. it's an opto isolator yes yeah. oh that's for the pump that's for the pump got it very cool. So, when you're doing setup, do you position this manually, or do you, or are, there, are there controls for doing the positioning, or, or you run everything from the uh, from the pick? Um, so, there really is no controlling from the pick in terms of positioning it initially. We just kind of marked it so that we always start here. Got it. If it starts there, then it should always Got produce it. the same okay. results. Alright. And, um, yeah. and you can you can do a little bit 
you can do a little bit of amplitude and side to side adjustments to do the fine tuning for the thing. Okay. Okay. Do you want to run it again or no? So, we don't, yeah, we can. We just will require a new cup of coffee, I think, if we wanted to. Yeah, because it might spill over. Uh, we can, we can try this one. Sure. Do you think we have enough milk? Can you, can yeah, you stir that? Yeah, I think we have enough milk. Yeah, we have enough milk, I think, if we stir it. Uh, let's elevate it. What's the difference? Here? This is like what, two inches. So I'm gonna adjust a little bit. Do you want to just do the blunt design? Sure, that might be good. <coughs> All right. Okay. I think we're ready to go. <coughs> So this is a simple block design. It's not going to do anything fancy. It's pretty much putting milk in it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But we can see all the, the basic motions of the of the pump and the uh, the stir. And it's actually inserting milk underneath the mm -hmm. surface. And it looks like you're running out of milk since you're starting to pump air. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But yeah. Cool. Wow. A lot of how to make latte videos in order to figure out the different mechanics of where the milk is supposed to go, temperature, how much. Yeah. The hardest part was getting the texture of the milk foam correct because like, if it's not just right, it won't make the powder at all. I did, had no idea. So you learned all kinds of things you didn't know you were. The interesting thing about this course is that everybody learns something, but I can never predict what it's going to be. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.